Good morning, Tahmina Khan is here and this video is in continuation of video 1 on sampling and estimation in which I have covered three aspects of the syllabus of S2 A level mathematics and um, before I start I would like to mention here that this is the blog address on which I am putting up the links of link of all my videos right okay so in the previous um, video video number one I covered the concept of sample and population what are they then how to use random numbers to produce a random sample then I explain what is sample mean distribution and I explain one question from the past paper and now I will explain in this video what is central limit theorem and again I will take example of the question from the past paper only and how to calculate unbiased estimate of the population mean and variance since I keep the length of my videos around 15 minutes so I will see if it is 15 minutes or less then I will explain one more concept so let's just start with the concept of central limit theorem in the previous video we saw the concept or the question in which we took a sample from the distribution which was normally distributed and definitely the sample distribution mean was also normal now here we will see that if the sample we are taking from the distribution which is not normal then how do we get the or calculate the probability right okay so here we need to understand what is a central limit theorem so this theorem says that if you take a sample of size n now here I will tell you the question requirement is I mean the sample requirement is it should be greater than or equals to 30 and I'll tell you why so if the sample size is greater than 30 then non-normal population the sample you will take from non-normal population will give you approximately normal uh, will give you approximately normal right so we will just see the example here so what you have to remember that when you are taking a sample from a non-normal population if sample size is greater than or equals to 30 you can apply central limit theorem and it simply means that your distribution of sample mean is approximately normal and then what we just learned in the previous video that your distribution of the sample mean will be this same what we were using in the case when we were taking sample from the normal population so in the question when uh, it is asked okay, should we apply central limit theorem so you will read the question carefully if question is not mentioning that the population is normal but the sample size is greater than 30 then you will say yes we will apply central limit theorem because distribution is unknown but the sample size is large hence the sample mean distribution will be used and using this distribution we will calculate the uh, probability so let's see an example okay so this question I have taken from November of 4 question number 2 right now in this question they are talking about the amount of sunshine on any day in any particular town in Spain has mean 6.7 hour and standard deviation 3.1 now you can see in this question nowhere it is mentioned that it is normally distributed so you don't know right now when this is not known it means it means now we will apply central limit theorem right because in the syllabus the questions which for which the sample is taken from um, from 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 a non normal distribution uh, population then sample size is taken big for example here you have to find the probability that the mean amount of sunshine over a random sample of 300 days is between this 6.5 to 6.8 hour so you will find probability for this interval and it is taking 300 hour right so you know your x your random variable is talking about the daily amount of sunshine in hours so according to the population 
your distribution is this. This is your mean and this is your variance. After that, you will write the distribution for the sample mean, which you will use to calculate the probability. The sample mean is represented by x bar and the sample size is 300 days. So it is greater than 30, so definitely we can apply central limit theorem and it will give us approximately normal. Okay, so my mean will be 6.7, which is same. We have seen that. But variance of sample mean will be, the sample distribution will be 3.1 square divided by 300. Right? And you are explaining here because you have to tell the conditions. You will say since n is large, then by the central limit theorem, we can calculate the probability. Right? So we have seen what is the variance. And what is the mean for the sample distribution? So after that, you will write properly the distribution for the sample. And you have to calculate the probability that the sunshine, um, sunshine in, 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 in the, on that particular day is for greater than 6.5 hour and less than 6.8 hour when you have seen the data for 300 days. Right? So you are calculating the probability. So you are changing this into standardized form. Z. And you know what is Z is? X bar minus mu divided by sigma over root n. So I am applying here 6.5 minus mu divided by root of this. Same thing here. 6.8 minus 6.5 divided by root of this. It will help me to change sample mean into standardized, uh, sorry, sample random variable into a standardized form. So here I have changed it. So if I show you through graph, what does it mean? That you have to calculate the probability between this and this C value. This is negative. This is positive. So it is on the left hand side see here and it is on the right hand side so this is your z value and these are your x bar values and mean was 6.7 okay so now now how i have done this the meaning of this question is basically you have to calculate this whole probability minus this probability. So I have simply split it into part. I am saying probability of z less than this minus probability of z less than this. Here students usually get confused that symbol greater is used here than why I am using less. I am just trying to explain the same question into another way. Here in the first line I am saying between these two. And in this line, I am saying this probability minus this probability will be equal to this. Right? So, I am splitting it into two parts which make the calculation simple. Anyway, so the table which is given to you have all the z values which are positive. So, you can easily read against 0 0.559. Your answer of probability will be this. By the way, this symbol is phi. This simply means z less than this. So I am writing this into phi form. So I have calculated from the table this probability I got. But when I will try to get this probability, I cannot read directly from the question uh, from the table because there is no negative z value given. So what do we do in that case? For example, see here. Now your minus 1.117 is on this side and normal graph is symmetrical graph. So it means the same value is here which is 1.117. According to this question you need this probability right less than this. So this probability is equal to this probability. So what I am doing here I am finding the probability 
less than 1.117 and subtracting it from 1 to get this. That's why I have written here 1 minus this probability. This means this whole thing. And once I get this, right, after subtracting from 1, I got this. And now what I am doing? Simple algebra, simple calculation. So this probability you have read from the table, this whole thing, and subtracting it from 1. So your answer is 0 0.580 in 3 significant figure. Second part of the question was saying, give a reason why it is not necessary to assume that the daily amount of sunshine is normally distributed in order to carry out the calculation in part 1. So we are using normal method but it is not necessary to assume that the daily amount is normally distributed. So can you tell the reason? It's because the sample size is bigger. Once sample size is bigger it gives us approximately normal. Right? So you can simply say okay, no it is not necessary to have it from the normal distribution the sunshine or sun rays we are talking about because the sample size is large enough and the central limit theorem says that for large samples the distribution of mean sample random variable is approximately normal right so now let's see another example so we have seen the case when the random variable was from the normal distribution then when the random variable from the non-normal distribution uh, population. So now we will take it x is a discrete variable and discrete variable mean it means it is from binomial distribution or from Poisson distribution. We know that normal distribution is a continuous variable whereas binomial and Poisson are discrete variables. So if the question is taken from here if you remember earlier Whenever we use approximate normal for the questions of binomial distribution or Poisson distribution, we apply continuity correction of plus minus half. So what we will do in this case when we are taking the um, sample from the distribution which is discrete, right? So when you will use the data from discrete variables and use approximate normal, you have to apply continuity correction and in the case of sample random sample you add and subtract 1 over 1 divided by 2 times n now if you see n when sample size increases because you have to say take a big sample size okay why because the distribution is not normal but you are going to apply normal distribution method on it so you have to you have to change it into continuous data and you have to take the n bigger now when n is bigger the denominator will increase when denominator will increase this will decrease so the theory says that when n tends to infinity means getting bigger and bigger this value will become smaller and smaller and it is said tends to 0 when this tends to infinity. So in that case for the large sample size the continuity correction doesn't make much difference. It is very little difference. So that's why it is often omitted. You do not consider, you do not show the continuity correction. Whatever the value is given you just use that value. Right. So let's take an example of the question taken from past paper. Now this question I have taken from June 06, it is question number 3 and this question says that the random sample of size 120 are taken from the distribution B represents binomial and if you remember the parameters of binomial are N and P, remember? So this is given to in the question and question is saying describe fully the distribution of sample mean. This is given to you the distribution of population, right? And now this is about the sample mean distribution he is asking. So, and part 2 is saying find the probability 
that the mean of a random sample size is greater than 6.1. So let's find out the distribution first of all. Now if you remember, when we change binomial, uh, I mean approximate normal for binomial, what distribution we use? We have done it in S1. Can you recall? Okay, so if you can, very good. Otherwise, if you cannot, see here, your mu is NP and your variance is NPQ. And you know P plus Q equals to 1. So whatever is your P to get Q, you minus P from 1, right? So this is my N, this is my P. I multiply them, I get mean. If 0 0.4 is my P, then 0 0.6 is my Q. So my variance is 3.6, sample size is 120. So now, now the distribution of the sample mean will become, mean will be 6, variance will be 3.6 divided by 120 because it was variance over n. So how we will write it? Let's see it. This is how you will write it. 6 comma 3.6 over 120 and this represents sample mean and you must write because you are using approximate normal so you will write since n is large using CLT central limit theorem the distribution will be this right so when question says write down the distribution of sample mean you have to mention all this let's see what was the next question so the second part of the question was saying find the probability that the mean of a random sample of size 120 is greater than 6.1. So now I have to calculate the probability for random variable greater than 6.1. So let's see it. So this is how we will write that sample random variable is greater than 6.1 and I will change it into a standardized form. And you see 6.1 is written as it is 6.1 because we are not adding or subtracting 1 over 2n and the reason I have just explained to you. So z is equals to x minus mu over variance. So this is my view. Oh sorry, divided by uh, standard deviation. So I am taking root of it. So I got the value of z. So now the question means through graph if I show you sketch rather not graph sketch. z is plus so it is on the right hand side of the mean. You know, this is my mean, 6. 6 is my mean, this is my mean. So I will take right hand side of this and the z value is 0 0.577. And I have to calculate this probability because question is saying z is probability of z greater than this. So I am talking about these side of values. But when I will read the table, the standardized table, it always read the values of the left hand side. So when I will read again 0 0.577, it will give me 0 0.7181. And I, total 100% probability is 1, so I'll minus it from 1. And it will give me 0 0.282. And this is in three significant figure. So with this, I will end my video number 2. Thank you very much for watching it. If you have learned anything, if you liked it, please press like button, subscribe button and you can also press ring button. So you will get the indication of all my uh, new uploads because I have in my plan that after this I will upload hypothesis videos very soon. So right now in next video I will cover the remaining part of the syllabus which is related to confidence interval also. Thank you very much for watching. For the time being, bye bye.